be saying that. I don't think they saying they want all whites. The ears now, I mean the top. I'm not talking about, you know, Lil Timmy. You know, Lil Timmy, he want it all. So man, it just like realizing that somebody is doing what you think, what you think you doing, somebody already doing. You doing it the wrong way. You making a mess. And that's what I was doing. I was making a mess of some shit that people was already speaking of. But guess what though? Being negative is a business. So some people whole goal is to be that person that point out all the wrong. Cause it's a business. And I don't think I think a lot of people don't know that. A lot of y'all caught up in somebody else's business. I wanna say that one more time. A lot of y'all you thinking that, yeah, man, my, my, my favorite YouTuber, my favorite Twitch streamer, he going to make sure. Bro, it's a business to point out this negativity because you niggas, go, a lot of you niggas going to feed off it. You going to pay the bill that month. Oh, me, I found this new woo-woo-woo and fuck, the game is broken and woo-woo. You just paid the bill for that month. You thought you was, you know, was in there and get some valuable information, but nigga really was just... Doing what he do best Or she But That's my take on that You know Oh Hold up man Don't do that behind the back no more Alright Don't do that behind Dog That Damn that behind the back It is spicy Oh yeah That's a good shot Thank you player I knew you was coming You was terrible you not fading that. Now, yo, so so what we need to do as soon as the game over, you know, that's the only way we can buy the boost unless they passed it. So as soon as though we need to buy the boost. Oh. Hey, I ain't gonna lie though, I had the angle though. I mastered the angle. I had the angle if the other nigga helped out though. Hey, I ain't gonna count though, we losing. Where you at? Damn, we need Gatorade. Yo, take that too. Alright, we good. Good teamwork. <clears throat> Get that. Good two. Good shot. Good way to go for the rebound. Good shot. He said, "Y'all man I might not make it out this motherfucker." <laughs> uh, for real though. That's all. He tried. Oh, he tried. He tried to dunk. Yeah, we winning. We 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 in a good position. Fred ain't let me connect. I didn't. I wasn't. I don't know. Ooh. Why? Fast, stay up. That's a tough shot. Good shot. That's a big bucket. Let's lock in. That's it. Uh, yeah, I think we're doing a lot of reaching, to be honest. It's a, a lot of blitzing going on. Yo, every everybody open like y'all reaching too much, to be honest. 
Like, all they shot have been open. I'm here. Switch. Good D. Yo, the defense is terrible. The the the, the hey. Pay attention. Pay attention to the rotation. Good pinch, ball. And spank. Yo, he got me. Good help. Yo, we going for a three. That's a tough shot. Sight. Hey, no threes. Pay attention. Stop. Stop I overplaying. I have the big. I have the big. Switch. Switch. Yeah, we live. Oh. Stay out of three, stay out of three. Yo. That's a good jump. I'm a shooting. I'm a shooting. Good teamwork. Great teamwork. I don't, I don't hey, my, let's my, get Gatorade. Get, get, get Gatorade. Get Gatorade. Get Gatorade. <laughs> Try to get Gatorade. Now the jump shot definitely different without that Gatorade. All right. Great way to finish. Yes, sir. Teamwork in defense. Five assists. Good game. Good game. Good game. Them boys, I don't know. The defense was just, we was lost like a mother alpha. Yeah, we were definitely reaching, but All right, Gatorade, Gatorade. Oh, you can't. Uh, where you go? Okay. Oh, yeah. Damn. I'm just gonna buy 10 just in case I don't get back in. Alright. Yeah. I, I got me 10, boy. Oh, fuck. I bought Gatorade instead of the shooting boost. I'm tripping. <laughs> God damn. But I mean, I need Gatorade too, though. But damn. I bought, I bought all of them. I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Yeah, I did. But I. When you run out of Gatorade, you don't get the double bar, though. Mm. You should have it too, though, Spain. You get tired faster without it. I'm asleep. Got him. Got the angle. I got the angle, boy. <laughs> I don't get any angles. Good still. Good too. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Got the. It was okay. Got the angle. That's you going to need a lot of games. Which one? Which one it was that? And then he got on the white shit too, though. He not he don't even have on um high risk, high reward. He's shooting white. That's good defense. On the lock? The dark skin dude. Oh, I got him. I got him. And I got the angle. Yes, go, man. I'm getting my angles right. That's deep. Yeah, he missed. He shot together. Damn. That boy should be. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah. Damn, my bad. That would have been a big shot, too. Oh, 
Good shot. Good teamwork. Great teamwork. Stay there, stay there. I got you. No. That's all. <laughs> Man, my bad, my bad. That's my fault. That's all. That's a good vision. Let's go. <laughs> it's still. Do I see um a, a fireball is none back? Hey man, listen. I knew he was gonna go to claw. That's IQ. <laughs> he said we reaching too much. You funny. Good jump. <laughs> wow. Wow. This hey! guy, man. <laughs> Yo, I'm like, where the ball at? Ah, oh, that's funny. <laughs> wow, that's tough. Good pass. Good game. Uh, ass. Look at that. Ah, teamwork. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he said, "Get up." <laughs> Damn. If I would have hit that though, you would have been proud of me. Okay. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep, man. Come on. We about to fall on our face from this thing, man. Let's go. It's so cool you can like people's play too. Yeah. I can't like my own play though. That's your two piece of fuck though. I ain't liking nobody playing you. you, you <laughs> 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 That's tough. Okay. Boost, boost, boost. Oh yeah. We got a 15 game win streak in progress. I bought it. Let's go. I got it. I got it. Yeah, Damn. Guys, here's a few things that I did to become a millionaire. You can feel free to copy what I did and plug in what I did into your own plan. Let's talk about it. So let me lift this up for a second, guys. It's getting cold out here. Put that hat back on because it's kind of chilly. All right. So first things first, the very first thing I did to help me become a millionaire on a low income is I got laser focused on exactly what I wanted. In 2005 is the first time I remember telling myself that I want to be a millionaire. Now, what do I have to do to get to be a millionaire? Now, it took a while, it took 17, 18 years to get there, but guess what? Life happens, right? Things get in the way. You got to raise kids, you got to raise family, you got to keep doing the right thing over a long period of time. For me, it took a while, but once I got laser focused, it's like everything around me started to kind of line up in that direction that I was focused on. And then, you know, along the way, you have to pay for college college and you know you make a few mistakes here and there and you know things kind of get sidetracked and sideways for a year two three years but overall ultimately the more focused I got the more everything began to line up so that's number one I got laser focus now let me test how laser focused you are and stick around for all 16 of the rest of these guys now the second thing was I was very very consistent over a long stretch 
Even when I had no money, I kept doing what I knew was right to do with money. The putting food on my kids' table, making sure they eat before I eat, right? Giving and helping other people, paying all my bills on time, making sure the mortgage was paid and everything was taken care of before I took care of me, right? I just kept going. And you know, you'd be surprised what happens in life if you just keep going and keep doing the right thing that you know is right. Everything ultimately will work out for you. God and his universe is designed to make sure that if you stay focused and you keep going, it's going to work in your favor. Everything is going to be okay ultimately, but you got to be consistent longer than you probably want to be consistent. Now, the third thing I did is I developed this attitude that said, you know what? I hate debt. I don't like debt. I don't want debt. I want to get out of debt as soon as possible. And guess what? I ain't going back into debt. So I made this vow to get out of debt and not go back into debt ever. I looked at my liabilities and my assets and I said, man, these liabilities are dragging down my ability to become a millionaire. So I said, I'm done with debt. Haven't looked back, haven't needed debt since. Now the fourth thing is I begin to dream, right? I begin to make sure I had a vision of what I wanted and where I wanted to go. So I was able to sort of see what was not always in front of me to see. I was able to look beyond the fact that, okay, I only have an extra two or three hundred dollars every month right now. I was able to look beyond that and say, man, what would it be like if I had an extra fifteen hundred, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month? And so I had a little bit of hope the whole time when I wasn't making very much money. I had a little bit of hope the whole time when the expenses were almost the same as the income. Right. So I say that to say this, you may not have any, you may not have a whole lot of extra money for food. You may not have a whole lot of extra money after you pay your rent. And you might be at the point right now when you're watching this video, you don't really have a strong, solid roof over your head. But listen, if you have hope and some dreams and some belief about the future, you got a chance because the poorest person is not the person with no money. See, the poorest person is the person with no hopes, the person with no belief, the person who can't dream, the person who cannot see beyond their current circumstances, right? If you have no vision, you're way poorer than the person who has no money. Now, the fifth thing that I did was I stopped using credit cards. 2011 or so was the last time I used a credit card. I don't use them. Haven't needed them. See, credit cards for me represented like temptation. And so I said, you know, I don't be, I don't want to be tempted to swipe a card when I don't have the money. And that's just my personal preference. I never needed them. So I didn't use them. So I got rid of, stopped using them because remember what I said, I don't like debt. So if I didn't like debt, it means I don't like long-term debt or the short-term debt that comes with using a credit card. Now, the sixth thing I did to become a millionaire on a low income, well, let's put it like this. I didn't make six figures on my job until I was 50 years old. And at the same time, my wife, she never made more than, I think she never made more than $50,000 because she works part time. She never made more than $50,000 a year. So you have these two people with these very modest salaries, you know, some would consider a low income trying to build this wealth. But here's number six, we built the wealth together. So we got in the boat and started rowing in the same direction. It wasn't always like that for the first five, six years or so. But after that, after we had our uh, incomes separate, when we put them together and we start rowing in the same direction in the same boat, that's when everything got easier. Wasn't easy, but it got a little easier. It got a little bit better because we were going in the same direction. So number six, the sixth thing I did to become a millionaire on a low income is we put our money together in one pot and grew it together and started paddling the boat in the same direction. Now, the seventh thing I did to become a millionaire on low income is when it came time for my kids to go to college, I sent two kids to college. One kid didn't want to go to college at the, at the time, my oldest kid, but my two other children sent them to college with scholarships, cash money, and they worked. 
So what I'm saying is I found creative ways to pay for college without getting a loan. And when they came out of college, they had no debt. Now the eighth thing I did was I picked up some side hustles here and there. Yes, I worked at Eddie Bauer, folding clothes, right? I worked at Home Depot in the flooring department, right? Yes, I also had an eBay store. I, on eBay in about six years, I sold over $100,000 in merchandise on eBay. Now, all of it wasn't profit. I was running about a 40 to 50% profit margin. So 40 to $50,000 extra to help pay for her college was huge. The point is, is that I took, I did whatever it took to take on these side jobs and side hustles to make a little extra money to keep things afloat. Now, the next thing I did was I stopped getting car loans. Remember earlier I said I don't like loans. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna pay for all my, ca all my cars cash after the year about 2010 or so. All my cars cash, all my kids cars cash, right? Whatever it took, I didn't wanna take out that loan to go get a car and have a car payment because a car goes down in value. I didn't want to have anything around me going down in value when I'm trying to build up that asset side of the net worth equation to become a millionaire. So I've been focusing for the last 10, 12, 15 years on acquiring assets, things that go up in value. Now, how did I do that? Very practically, I stayed out of stores, right? It may sound weird, right? But I don't window shop. I don't go to the mall just to go to the mall. I don't go to the store just to look around to see what I may want. If I go to a store, I'm ready to buy. I don't think I've been in a mall in several years, right? I'm not out shopping and I'm definitely not out window shopping, trying to see what's out there. Window shopping for me, it used to sort of mess with my ability to de delay gratification. It kind of messes with my ability to, to be patient when it comes to purchases, right? So I just say, you know what? No more window shopping. And when I cut down on wanting so much stuff, I cut down on buying so much stuff. And that takes me to my 12th thing. The 12th thing is this. I adjusted my lifestyle to my income instead of trying to necessarily always adjust my income to my lifestyle. So I stayed living fairly frugal over these years and living below my means, my means being my income. My income is here. My income is $2,000 a month. Okay, I'm going to spend about $1,500 a month. And I'm going to make that adjustment instead of going out trying to take on a bunch of extra things just to live up to a lifestyle, right? So the only time I did that, take on the extra jobs and stuff, was to pay for things that I felt were very, very important, like when the kids went to school. When the kids were going to college, I said, let me get out there and make some more money and work some side jobs to have some other income. But other than that, I just live below my means and I live according to my income. Now, the 13th thing I did to become a millionaire on a low income is I never borrowed money from myself. Yeah, I had a, a thrift savings plan or, or, or investments that were growing and growing, but I made sure to never touch them. I never took a loan out on any of that stuff that it was growing. I just let it grow. In the year 2002, I had $10,000 that I transferred from a, a teacher retirement system that when I was a school teacher, I moved it over to the federal government, haven't touched it. To this day, that money I think has grown to over 300 something thousand alone. Just that $10,000 has grown by itself. So that was very important. You know, sometimes we get in these crunches where we really need some money. We gotta have some money and we wanna borrow against what we were trying to grow for our future. So one of the things I made sure was to never touch the money that I wanted to be there 20 and 30 years down the road. I just let it grow. Now let's go to number 14. The 14th thing I did to become a millionaire on a low income is I got really organized with my money very early on. In other words, I did a budget and I've done 362 straight monthly budgets in a row that have been written down on paper or on a spreadsheet. For the last six, no, last seven years, I've been putting my budgets, my monthly budgets on a spreadsheet, a Google sheet, right? But otherwise, guys, I, I got organized with my money and I did that through a budget, a written budget that was unique every single month. Now, the 15th thing I did to become a millionaire on a low income was about 10 years ago, I put my house, I moved my house from a 30 year mortgage to a 15 year mortgage. So for the first nine years or so, I had a 30 year mortgage and guess what? 
I only paid down the principal of my house by about $9,000 over the course of that first nine years of having a 30-year mortgage. Now, in the last 10 years of having a 15-year mortgage, I've actually paid off about $100,000 of my mortgage just by going to a 15-year note help me out and help grow the asset side of my net worth equation. Now, for some of you, you may say, nah, that's not me. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pay a little extra every month. But what I wanted to do back in 2014 is I told myself I want to force myself to be committed to pay down this house early. And the best way to do that is by forcing me, because again, rates were low. Don't get me wrong now. We weren't talking about rates in the six, seven, eight percent range for more for, for a 15 year mortgage. We were talking like two and a half to three and a half percent. So when rates were that low, I said, let's go to a 15. Let's not try to pay extra on the on a 30 year. Let's go ahead and put it on a 15 year and force ourselves to actually pay that thing off sooner. And in the last 10 years, it's knocked down the principal incredible. Now again, this is how I became a millionaire on a low income. How you become a millionaire on a low income is up to you. Now, speaking of houses, number 16 is I bought rental houses early on in the process of trying to build wealth. And I've talked a lot on this channel about how I bought those houses wrong for the most part. I ended up keeping two properties that I've had for over 20 years and those two properties have gotten paid down and their um, the equity on those properties has grown and they've become a big part of my investment portfolio over the years. So I found a way early to buy some rental properties, held on to those properties all these years and now those properties look like a really nice investment that I made 20 some odd years ago. Now the 17th and final thing that I did to become a millionaire on a low income is I stuck with a career long enough to be good at the career and to increase my level of pay in that career, right? I got the education, the certifications, whatever it took to continue to grow in one field. See, what happens to a lot of people is they jump from career to career to career to career. And when you jump from all those different careers, jobs, whatever you want to call it, it's not wrong with doing that. But just remember that a lot of times you have to sort of start over when you do that. Right. So you get to the point where you were moving along in this area, but then you got tired of it five or six years later and you changed. And then you got tired of that. Next thing you know, you're 45, 50 years old looking for a new career. And what happens is you always stay at that base or bottom level in that career. You never move up to maybe become a manager or to move up the totem pole in terms of pay because you're switching around a lot. But if you stick with it, eventually you'll earn more income in whatever field or industry that you're in. Look, I'm a guy that had 20 some odd jobs by the time I was 30 years old. So me over the last 20 years, only having one or two jobs has been a big change. But guess what? It's allowed me over the years to make more and more money in that particular career field. Look, the point is this. I had to change some things and ultimately changing the way I think, changing the way I behave made a difference in terms of my outcomes. It gave me greater outcomes when it comes to building up money and building up wealth and ultimately becoming that millionaire. Look, anything is possible. Even the word impossible says what? If you break it down and put an apostrophe after the I and you put a space between the M and the P, even the word impossible becomes I'm possible. Look, I didn't do anything fancy. I didn't do any crypto. I didn't do any Forex, no weekend boot camps, weekend seminars, no credit card points, uh, no whole life insurance that I borrowed from, no special math, no gifts from my parents. I didn't inherit anything, right? No loan forgiveness. Look, if you did any of that, that's cool. I'm not mad at you. But for me, I had to get it from the bottom. I had to grind my way up to become a millionaire from nothing. And I'm talking about nothing at the age of 30. I had a negative $30,000 net worth to my name and I pulled it out of the mud. Now I'm not saying everybody got to pull it out of the mud like that. You got to be thinking of ways you can get to whatever you want. Maybe you don't want a million. Maybe you want two million. Maybe you want 500,000. Whatever it is, I hope this video gave you something to think about and gave you something to work towards. Look, it's possible. Don't think that just because you have a low income, you have to have a low outcome. Feel free to copy my plan and put it into your plan. Look, if you got anything of value out of this quick video, 
smash that like button for me. But more importantly than smashing the like button, share this information, share the video with somebody who you know could use this information. Drop me a comment below and let me know what you think. Hey, the best person who's gonna take care of that old you is the young you. Guys, take good care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace. That's green. Slice, man. Oh. Can I get that? <laughs> hey, my three only are 80, though. I've been hitting. Hey. I've been hitting with this little 80, dog. I got an 80. I'm finna hit this then. It's a good dunk. Lay it. What's your vertical on that shit? <laughs> Man, he ain't got that 75 vert. Look at Claw, man. That's how you jump, Spank. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> Damn, man. That's tough. Maybe I should have played some park, man, to get my three point percentage up before I came and went to that damn theater, bro. Man, we've been out. We was on the 18. We just lost. We just lost two in a row. We was on the 18, though. Yeah, we getting games. I think the long as we probably waited was about two minutes. Something never changed, huh? Something never changed. <laughs> Something never changed, don't it? Great defense, man. I got it on go. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Hey, you want? Yeah, that's tough, man. Bro, look at that pad. That shit was slow as hell. Now I know y'all seen that little combo though. He got a rebound. Get on his head then. <clears throat> How y'all feeling about the game though, man? Y'all should be ready to rate it. What y'all got? Okay. Cause you got clock. I mean, spank.